The toll dying in childbirth takes on women in Uganda can be seen at a home in a small village called Sala, Chibuku district in eastern Uganda. Matilda 30 died in late January. Her husband tells the story. Kusawa, uira wangu kwe gitawu dada. Mnana kumwe kwe kumwe kumwe kwe kumi. Niyanko rati mnange ndi. Obi engene za niki. Ati oh, mkida mzoku kwa niki. Wakunta nuka. Nifuru miegali. Ni mteka ku. Nitu atuko kuidu ato. Jaji daba sao. Niyo msao, tuduro mwana kuunga. Na ule mwana kuunga ni kaze toho, mwisu uke. Hata hatu kare, vinyi manevi kare, kare niki, evi sigaire. Kala amu kari, na uro kwekanga, awamuwi. Kidanga chedumbi, anga kwedumbi ya kiti. Kikarumo, kiti. Kikarumo, osoko mkari ya kore niki. Yo ya abre nga wamu ya atiyo. Kali walete motoka. Tugingi rampu, tugingi raku. Atumu hiri anu. Na angota ku ngota ye ye atiyo. Matilda already had 13 other children now living with their father, Konope Besweri. Matilda was a very active lady. Tutiyama ono mkari, ngatura ambo jano, kwa nganzi natambula angaku. Nganjaku ila ono mkari wangari wanabani. Ono mkari natani kukumbe plani, na anko mati mbanangi. Tusukale ngatukula na mani, tukule, tukule nge kuye vigona. Ngono tuviyala. Olao. Buli kasa ndege na funa anga, kwa mkuu ateng kumbini suna, na oni akatakali. Na wana mama wangu tani kwenye kubateka kumusume na wese ndi. Tete au ni yuko katunde yangu biro mwigo, omne ne. Na dola kumi na anguo. He had lived a poverty-stricken childhood. He missed school because his father was too poor to pay his school fees. At 18, he took a wife. With his wife who was much younger than him, they began a life of hard work. They were determined to change the tide. Marriage for Besuri was much more than just companionship. It was an investment. So he decided that he and Matilda would have many children. They decided on having 14 children. The synergy of a huge family would be reflected in the harvest from the farm. Sadly, Matilda never lived to see her 14th and last born. She died immediately after giving birth to her last born child. <laughs> Kubanga, omwan, omukali. Abenu mukalati ya, moiza. In Chibuku district, the biggest causes of maternal death are the three delays. Delay in decision making to seek help. Delay in transportation to health institutions. And delay of care within health facilities. Poverty and lack of appropriate transport are major contributors to these delays. Hemorrhage is the main cause of death, accounting for over one quarter of deaths. Other deaths are caused indirectly by pre-existing medical conditions aggravated by the pregnancy. Hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, especially eclampsia, as well as sepsis, embolism and complications of unsafe abortion, also claim a substantial number of lives. Although community health workers visit villages and try to ensure women prepare for birth, and give birth in health facilities, the gaps are still glaring. A mother's death renders families dysfunctional. 
Part of the impact of such death is teenage pregnancies because of early marriage. Some get pregnant without a husband. Girls aged as young as 12 are getting pregnant. In a short while, we will have come full circle. Sharifa is 16, but looks younger. Married off at a tender age, Sharifa is here to attend her first antenatal visit. Three and a half months pregnant, Sharifa got pregnant in the first month of her marriage. She is here alone because her husband went away to the city immediately after their marriage. This is unfamiliar territory for her. She's a scared little girl. Her dreams of going to school and becoming a professional teacher were thwarted when her mother died during labor. She was forced to live with her maternal aunt who cared less about her education. If she had the opportunity to go back to school, would she? Her pretty innocent face and her answer makes you sad. Sharifa knows her life would have been different if her mother had lived and if she had continued with her education. She has regular dreams about that. The older women too have their fears. Rose, 35, is carrying her seventh pregnancy. She has been trying to use contraceptives with negative results at every attempt. Inside the clinic, women are in labor. Nightfall is the most dangerous time for a woman to go into labor. There is no electricity, not even in the labor rooms. You are using phones to conduct delivery. And if it's a PG, you need to put the phone in your mouth to give you light. Then candles. Losing a mother does not just have practical implications for the children relating to household economics. There are informational, emotional and social costs as well. <coughs> Maternal death exacerbated children's vulnerabilities to long-term health and social impacts related to nutrition, education, employment, early partnership, pregnancy, and caretaking. Me, in Sigaident, ya, Okuya, before me rain. We've got a Ganavia Korean. Very war. Native medicine, Nadi Rokoraniki, Oxum. Wrong and Mokuri, see a moon mark, your immediate. As you could see a mini bemoon de mebiri. Oh, my. Yafuidemsizoni when a mother dies, her daughter loses a vital source of information about gender roles, relationships, behavior, the body, and reproductive health. 
Suddenly the girl charges alone at the deep end of the sea. That is what overwhelms Harriet. Where would she find the motivation and success? Harriet and her siblings now live with a stepmother. Already when weighed down by fending for 13 children, Beswari's new marriage came with a new set of challenges. His young new bride needed children of her own too. The detrimental consequences of a maternal death ripple out from the mother's spouse and children to the entire household and across generations. When the maternal death leaves in its wake a newborn, the household may be left scrambling even more. Mamma, <laughs> Parents' emotional loss often expresses itself as anger and pain. Husbands express the loss of daily companionship. In fact, more women die in childbirth than they do in epidemics. The lifetime risk of maternal death is the probability that a 15-year-old will die from complications of pregnancy or childbirth over her lifetime. One out of every 36 women risk death as a result of childbirth in sub-Saharan Africa. That death should not be a mere statistic, but should move us to act more decisively to stop it. Reducing preventable maternal mortality and diminishing the impacts on children, extended families and communities, highlights the importance of financing and implementing universal access to emergency obstetric and neonatal care and contraception as well as social protection programs, including remote populations. There is need for social support mechanisms to assist families who suddenly find themselves caring for orphan children. 800 women dying each day is appalling. It is not acceptable that women should die. Any woman. Most maternal deaths can be prevented if births are attended by skilled health personnel, doctors, nurses or midwives who are regularly supervised, have the proper equipment and supplies, and can refer women in a timely manner to emergency obstetric care when complications are diagnosed. Mothers should know about the risks of giving birth and how to avoid it through family planning, and in into care attendance, facility deliveries and postnatal care. Access to emergency surgical care and referral transport remains a major gap in quality service delivery. Health and policy stakeholders, along with communities themselves, must understand that maternal mortality is a health issue, a human rights issue, and a social justice issue. A mother's death is not a mere statistic. It is a catastrophe. <laughs>